first of all, guys, I, I've been, I was literally just on the phone with the town of Moffat. Um, the mayor is having a hard time with the residents understanding that they need to get out. We feel like the water is probably about 11 hours before it starts getting to them. So if I could speak to the people of Moffat right now, please, please, please get out. Uh, we've got houses that the only thing that's sticking out uh, of the water in Fort Gibson is the roofs. And that water is all coming to you guys. A lot of people are saying or comparing this to 1986 flood. We're at levels higher than that at this point. So um, this isn't a game. I know it's sunny outside, but keep in mind this water is coming from coming from from north of us, and it's going to continue to flow our way. So we need to take it very serious. Yeah, I'd just like to say to you all that uh, thanks. First of all, thanks for everybody that's been working so hard. You know, we're just talking to Commissioner Keith here, just everybody working late in nights and all night long and the, the command center being open for another 48 hours. Uh, all this water's coming downstream and uh, probably the worst we're going to see right now in this end. Uh, we're going to go check the levees out in a minute. But the main thing about this is, is we're talking a lot about water, but this water is affecting a lot of people, a lot of houses, and we want to get a handle on that to see uh, you know, what we all can do from you know, local, state, and federal level to make sure that people get the help when they need it. But uh, we just had the opportunity, the congressman and I had, had the opportunity to go see it from the National Guard heli helicopter. Downstream, they may not be as uh, well informed as they need to be. And I know there's a tendency, if you live in the country, you don't think that, you know, this is that big a deal, but it's a big deal. There are a lot of water moving. And uh, just down in uh, about Leonard a minute ago, we saw where water had gotten out and uh, it wasn't that way just yesterday. So please listen to the local officials as they come knocking on your door. Uh, another thing we want to put in there too, for all of our elected officials or towns uh, from Tulsa downstream all the way to Moffitt, uh, make sure you're keeping track of all this. Uh, for, for the national, uh, uh, for the federal dollars to flow in, we hurt, hit certain thresholds. I think we're going to hit the threshold, unfortunately, but it's very important that you keep track of all your spending. Uh, I don't care if it's a bottle of water to overtime to assets you need to come in. We need to make sure we keep track of of all that it's vitally important take pictures um it, make sure you're documenting everything you can from our perspective and i just want to say that's that's a great perspective uh, you know your city leaders your county leaders uh, i would say your state leaders have been doing a great job uh congressman Mullen and i just got back in town last night uh, senator langford late last night we've been able to get a first-hand look at what's going on today uh, it's it's uh, unbelievable actually to see what happened in 1986 and to think that uh, you know, down in Muskogee, they're three feet above that. Everything is flooded, uh, Highway 62 underwater and, and flowing across Highway 62 just before you get into Fort Gibson. Uh, we saw bridges uh, just out north of Fort Gibson, uh, highway bridges, uh, rail bridges underwater. Uh, it's, it's really bad. And so I know that people are watching and listening, but please listen uh, to what your local officials are saying and thank your local officials. What happens next on the federal level as far as FEMA and things? Are they sending so, more people? Or? Well, I mean, FEMA's the national, on the national level, they've all been notified. Uh, it, we've had conversations with the White House. They understand it. Uh, they're working with the governor. I, I was on the phone with the governor literally late last night or early this morning. The first thing this morning, I'm headed to Muskogee right here in just a second to meet with him. He's coordinating with the state. Our first is local, second is state, third is federal. And uh, when water starts, starts going down is when the federal side will be kicking in the most. Uh, right now, they're working with, with the National Guard, making sure that, uh, that they have the assets to be able to respond to in, in these emergency points. There's a disaster relief bill pending in Congress right now. Any chance we could get a chunk of that or you could no. throw something in in last not, minute? Not on, not on this one. Uh, unfortunately, it, it got stalled in, in the House this morning. Uh, but that's th that is from storms in the past. This will be a completely separate package. What is next for y'all? Well, I'm going to go spend the rest of the day going around and looking at uh, talking to folks at shelters, but seeing the damage, talking to people locally. Uh, we're going to go out to Highway 51, see some of the damage out in Sand Springs for people being uh, relocated. Uh, you know, a lot of people are driving up and down Riverside Drive and seeing water levels like they've never seen before. I would highly encourage you to keep your speeds up and keep moving as that's creating a real congestion on Riverside Drive. But as you get down toward Bixby, uh, please again, heed the warnings because water's still coming your way. Uh, it should be cresting at some point right now, but uh, again, we want to get out and see the people who've been hurt. Do you, it, oh, sorry. Well, and, <laughs> and to, to piggyback on what uh, Congressman Hearn is saying, guys, I know people want to get out and see it. 
Um, but keep in mind, emergency vehicles are trying to get in and people are trying to get out. If you don't need to be there, don't be there right now. Uh, it is, it, it, this water's moving quickly downstream and all these towns are being affected one at a time and it's like a domino effect. We really need to make sure that people, if they don't need to be in the area, don't be there right now. And this is the time to really thank your, your utility folks too. They've had to cut off entire areas of town to keep the electricity down. We, uh, Congressman Mullen and I just saw across uh, just south of Bixby, actually just south of Leonard, where a high power transmission line is actually in the, in the river. Water, yeah. yes. And it's actually this way out in, in uh, Sand Springs as well. Right. So uh, just people be careful. Don't be out in your boats looking around. It's, it's really dangerous out there. If, let's say these levees, they look like they'll hold up, but let's say this all six months from yeah, now goes pause. down. Pause real quick to the, these choppers. Well, it's channel six. Anyway. <laughs> 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 Sorry, tell your that's chopper. All wave, that's all wave at him. Let's wave at him. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, let's wave at him. <laughs> yeah, more like. <laughs> Get out of our shot. Are you going to need okay Todd to help there. respond to this levy yeah. question? Maybe the colonel might be the best oh, one yeah. to respond on that. Well, so let's go ahead. hear what it is and we'll figure yeah. it out. So. Well, I was, I was going to say, how soon do you think we can get money to get these things to where they That's need fair. to be? Well, as you, as you may be aware of, uh, there's a study being done right now. I've, I've spent a lot of time with uh, Commissioner Keith on this. Uh, driving up down the levees uh, over the last uh, six months, about seven months now, looking at it, even far back as a year and a half ago. This has been an ongoing conversation. Uh, we need to see what the levees are. You know, most of these are built in the 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, and uh, we know we've got some real opportunity here. These levees were, well, you know, were built to have a, a crest on them and then back down. We're talking three or four days of sustaining at 250,000 cubic feet per second which is gonna be you know, a real test for these old levees and we're gonna have to see what we have any breaches. I know that many folks are up and down the levees right now looking at them. We, the Colonel and I have been working together three years, yes, sir. three years uh, and before the Colonel uh, came on, I was working with Colonel Pratt and Colonel T before that. And we were at a 260 plus million dollar critical backlog need before this started happening. Uh, and the colonel has worked very hard, diligently trying to get the funds here. Um, if you're looking at a optimistic perspective at this point, uh, I believe there's going to be dollars flowing in because it's going to be ne it's, it's going to be necessary for it to happen. It, we're going to have a hard time bringing this navigational channel back up. Um, there's no telling where the new river is going to set because it's going to change direction or not change directions, but change location to some degree. That's going to take an effect. Uh, and so there's going to have to be dollars going to be this emergency dollars just going to be allocated for it. Colonel you want to respond to that? So I, I think in answer to your direct question I think you're referencing Tulsa West Tulsa levy system behind us so uh, Congressman is exactly right we're in the middle of a, a feasibility study to take a look at uh, Tulsa West Tulsa levy uh, determine uh, what the what the status is of the levy and really at the end of that that'll conclude uh, August 2020 uh, and then what we'll do is that we'll take a look at whatever the the tentatively selected plan is, and what that'll do is give us some options in terms of what we can do to this levee system to help make it uh, better in terms of uh, protecting the Tulsa areas that are behind it. So I'd say we're going to have potential options in, in August 2020, and then then it will compete for funding uh, like every, most of the other uh, is, projects in con uh, the core. Is this current level putting a strain on them that's doing damage to them, or or? Uh, that, I mean, puts them in jeopardy in, in the near future? So, you know, th this levee was designed to hold roughly 300,000 cubic feet per second. And so right now we've got 250,000 cubic feet per second on it. So you're looking at about, you know, 70, 70% load on it right now. Uh, there's no indicators, at least from our perspective, that lead us to believe that the, 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 the levee is in, in jeopardy right now. We're in a technical support mode right now. So the core, uh, really, we, we, we work with uh, Todd Kilpatrick here in, in the levee district 12 very closely. We're helping monitor uh, the levy. We help walk the levy. We do uh, response operations in terms of emergency contracting if they need to do a repair. Uh, we did a sandbagging uh, exercise a couple weeks ago that, that enabled Todd to have uh, sandbags uh, uh, stocked here and ready for, for response efforts. So we work very closely with them, but right now uh, we don't have anything uh, to lead us to believe that the, that the levy system is in any sort of imminent danger of uh, failure.